everyone, today we are making a vegan lentil shepherd's pie in a cast iron skillet. For this recipe, we're going to start with what is called a mirepoix. This is simply a mix of chopped onion, celery, and carrot. I have about two carrots here, two socks of celery, and one medium chopped onion. Next, I'm going to add just one chopped zucchini. If you don't like zucchini, you can also substitute this with frozen peas. Here is chopped potatoes. It's three small russet potatoes and one half of a rutabaga. I also have about a tablespoon of vegan butter. Use any vegan butter or margarine you like. And next we have three cloves of chopped garlic. This is optional. I just really like garlic and happen to use it in most of my recipes. And here is one cup of brown lentils. Be sure to use brown or green lentils as these will hold their shape better. Here is also one tablespoon of tomato paste just to add an extra savory note. And we also have one tablespoon of soy sauce. This will add a nice salty umami kick to the shepherd's pie. And for our seasonings, we will be using thyme leaves, powdered rosemary, and paprika. We will be cooking our lentils in vegetable broth for maximum flavor. All right, let's get started. I'm going to start by boiling the chopped russet potatoes and the rutabaga. I have a lightly salted water here, and you want to boil them until they're very soft, about 15 to 20 minutes. If you're wary of rutabaga, you can also feel free to substitute with other starchy vegetables, such as sweet potato. Next, in a small pot, I'm going to start cooking my lentils in vegetable broth. So here I have two cups of vegetable broth already starting to come to a simmer. I'm going to add my one cup of lentils and just stir to combine. After about 20 minutes, almost all the vegetable broth has been absorbed, so I'm going to be adding the tomato paste and just stirring to mix it in gently without smushing the lentils. Once it's incorporated, cover and cook over low heat for just about five more minutes until all the broth has cooked into the lentils. I've added just a little bit of oil to my cast iron skillet and we're going to start with the mirepoix. I'm going to cook this for about 10 minutes over medium heat until the onions are just translucent and the carrots and celery have gotten just slightly browned. Once the mirepoix has just browned, we're going to add the zucchini and the garlic. We don't want to overcook our zucchini as it will get too mushy. The same for frozen peas if you decide to use those instead. We want them to just be tender crisp. After a couple minutes, when the zucchini are just starting to get tender, we're going to add our soy sauce for our umami and salty kick to the dish. Go ahead and turn off the heat. The cast iron skillet will stay warm as everything incorporates. And next we're going to add our seasonings. First is just a half teaspoon of rosemary. Our half teaspoon of thyme leaves. Go ahead and pinch these between your fingers to release the oils and all the flavor. And lastly, just a bit of paprika. Now that the broth has just cooked into the lentils, we can go ahead and add everything into the cast iron skillet. We're just going to stir this so that everything's evenly incorporated and flatten it out as we get ready to make and add our potato and rutabaga topping. I've just added the cooked rutabaga and russet potatoes to a bowl and I'm adding ample salt to taste and I've already added the butter as well. 
And now I'm just going to use an immersion blender to puree everything until it's very smooth. So you might be wondering why we are using rutabaga instead of just potato. While potatoes are still healthy and offer nutritious things such as potassium, rutabaga is actually significantly lower in calories and overall carbohydrates. This leads to more stable blood sugar levels. Rutabaga is also very rich in beta carotene, the precursor to vitamin A. This vitamin is necessary for healthy vision, bone growth, cell division, skin, and immunity. Once it's all pureed to a smooth consistency, we're just going to top the lentils and vegetables with the rutabaga and potato puree. We just want to smooth everything out on top of the lentil and vegetable mixture and then go in with a sort of zigzag pattern so that when we put this in the oven, the peaks will brown. Here's the final product. It's really rich and satisfying and I hope you enjoy it.